Uh, so this morning, or yesterday, I was doing a normal set of uh, neck exercises, like, uh, like up and down, and pick a, you hold your forehead. And I'm pushing this way, I try to resist it as I go back, and then push through it all the way down. And it's safe for like pushing with my hand and trying to resist it both directions and um, pushing both ways. Like that, I do like, and I, I do, I think about 25 reps on the, uh, each direction, the head turning and 10 vertical, like up and down, uh, like 10 with the hand in front, 10 with the hand in back. And that's all fine. That doesn't really do anything bad. And then my neck's been slowly getting stronger. Like I, and chin tucks, like where you pull your head back like this. Uh, I used to only be able to do a couple without some pain and tinnitus and and uh, now I'm probably doing like 60 a day um, but then I hadn't really been doing these where you hold your where you push back and you push your head forward through it oh, I can't my freaking shoulders busted it's so, so high I can raise my hand but anyway so like imagine my hands touching my forehead and I'm pushing through it um, and I do like 10 of those and um, and then at the base of my skull back here, like right at the, I don't know if you can see, but right at the base of your skull, like where it meets your neck, about an inch deep in there, I can feel grinding. Like this morning, like when I turned my head, it was like this, um, I could like hear the connective tissue like stretching and grinding. It was sort of like a scraping, grinding sound. It was loud. I had that a little bit. But then, like, now it's like... So I think I, I did that too hard, like, on the... Um, I don't know if that's the longitudinal ligament that... I think <laughs> that's what holds your head, your C1 from coming forward and back. The longitudinal usually pulls it this way, towards your back, and holds it there. And if that's damaged, then it'll move around. And I think when I was... But I, I, I'm not sure because it's like the MRI doesn't show anything because MRIs never show anything for cervical ligaments unless, I mean, even if you get like, if you get in a crash and your neck is so traumatized you die, the MRI still doesn't show anything for cervical ligaments because it's just garbage. I mean, we, we think like, oh, you can see inside someone's body with the MRI. It's great. It's like, yeah, but it's, it really sucks. It's actually not good. Um, I mean, it's better than not having it, but for like torn up ligament uh, it's not good and the people that work on cervical ligaments every day will be the first ones to tell you this um, so, uh, so I think that I woke up this morning and the tinnitus was really loud and I was having that grinding issue it was so much louder than it's been like ever and, and I'd never done those before I didn't think I thought doing 10 I wasn't pushing that hard on my head but I guess that uh, that ligament is really weak, so I'm gonna have to start off without like any resistance, and maybe just do like five and see how. I, but I don't have to give it some time to rest, because if you do that, same for your shoulder or anything. If you do that and and you you aggravate it, then you have to let it, you know, give it a few days to rest and try a lighter weight. So that's how it works for any joint in physical therapy. Um, like my shoulder, my right shoulder, my left shoulder is frozen, my right shoulder is having issues. And I didn't want it to become like the left one, so I started lifting weights, and then it started getting a lot worse. And then, so I was like, okay, well, let me just lift my arm. So I was just lifting it, like, so I was, like, just raising it like this, just without any weight, like ten times. And then I give it two days, I do it 11. I give it two days and do it 12 and just see how I felt in between. And it didn't hurt. So as long as you can keep increasing the load and it's not hurting, then you're gonna, then you're getting stronger, generally speaking. Um, and now I'm, I'm a, I can do about 10 pounds and it feels fine. So I think I'm gonna avoid a frozen shoulder on my right shoulder. But anyway, for my neck, it's, um, <clears throat> 
It's obviously really frustrating because it's loud tonight. This is so stressful. And, uh, and plus, like, it feels loose. So, like, if I lean forward to, like, look at my wallet or something, um, because I gotta get, like, a, a, my card out or whatever, then, like, I can feel it, like, move. And I get, like, the high pitch tinnitus, which is, like, the, the ee sound, where it's just, like, it's like that sound you always hear in movies when, like, a bomb goes off. And it's just, like, that high pitch, like, that happens if I lean forward long enough. It doesn't have to be that long. Well, today it doesn't have to be that long because it's all messed up. And it, I don't know. I, I think that's what happens when it pushes against a nerve. Because I had someone. Um, it's, it's definitely pushing against something in there. But I think when something affects your nerve, pushes on. I don't know if it's like because it's pushing on my brainstem or what. Um, but. Uh, I, I don't know the biology of it, like, is it causing some sort of electrical, like, short circuit, like, neurological, um, where it just results in that constant noise, that's what the, that's what the sensation results in, because I don't feel it, like, I can just hear it, and, but, so... But regardless of what's causing it, like, I know if I lean forward, if that happens. And then I lean back, and after, like, ten seconds, it stops. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say, like, uh, I wanted to say this because if other people are suffering from craniocervical instability, then this might be, like, and you're trying to do physical therapy, this is the kind of thing you can run into, and also... For tinnitus, like, it can definitely be caused by this. Like, the regular tinnitus I have, like, the... Like, when I when I say it was worse this morning, it was because the internal jugular veins were probably being more squashed because the C1 is more forward. And if the C1 is too far forward, it squashes your internal jugular veins. And I got all, like, the humming and screeching and all that crazy noise, which I got... I get uh, from my internal jugular veins being compressed. And it's weird because... I hear people talking about like pulsatile tinnitus, like somatic tinnitus, where something in your body is causing the tinnitus. Like people say, oh, if, like and a lot of doctors too, like if they say like, oh, if you have a vein block or something like that, then it, it's like a pulsing sound in rhythm with your heartbeat. Um, but that's not the case for me. For me, it sounds like, uh, like humming and there's like a like whoa 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 it's like it's not like if I take my pulse that's not in rhythm with my pulse and then there's like ee um and it's like that doesn't sound like a heart thing at all it doesn't sound like blood flow but it's like it is like if I I've done ultrasound and like I've worn neck weights where it opens up that and I wear the neck weights and my internal jugular veins get opened up and that sound stops. So it's like, so I have sounds that like my internal jugular veins are being blocked and it sounds like all kinds of crazy ringing and humming and screeching and all that stuff. So and that's just because of my neck. So I also want that, to, that information to be there because if you go to the doctor and you say that's happening to you, no doctor is going to say, hey... It could be your internal jugular veins. Like, I don't know why they don't know this, but nobody seems to know this. So it was like one guy in the last two years I've heard of is like some German researcher that's like, yeah, it doesn't have to sound like a heartbeat. But that's like it. And I've never heard anybody else. I mean, I've talked to two people who have internal jugular vein problems. I'll say, what's your sound like? And some will say it sounds like a heartbeat. And some will say it sounds like whooshing and humming and ringing there's like a whole pretty much every kind of tonight as you, you hear like you can be seems to be able to be caused by that and and i on my neck like on the back of my neck i think everyone's got veins there like i had my hand back like this and i was just laying on it and then i i realized i'd been like squashing a vein in the back of my head and i could hear it because it i guess it got back the pressure got backed up enough i started to be able to hear it 
and it, and it did sound like just like a whooshing in rhythm with my heartbeat so it's definitely possible too but the stuff with my internal jogger beans i don't know if it's because they're not fully closed so like a whistle isn't fully closed right and that's why it makes a louder more shrill sound um and, or maybe it's that there's an increased pressure and you're hearing the rubbing, um, like the stress on the, the walls of the vein, um, like the scraping sound. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. Uh, but, yeah, so I wanted to say that I'm going through this and just so this information's out there because it's not really out there and um, there's probably people out there with like neck problems and all that that you know, they mysteriously have tinnitus and and uh, doctors don't know why and they're just like ENTs don't know why and so anyway um, yeah so pushing on the forehead like that seems to aggravate the whatever leg I think it's the longitudinal leg method uh, keeps your C1 from sliding forward and um i believe mine's i mean they said mine was damaged on the digital motion x-ray they said i got it in tampa and uh they said my alar transverse and longitudinal was damaged but rotationally like if i do the rotation exercises it doesn't make my tinnitus worse um i mean it does like it did if i was overdoing it but I slowly, I started off doing like five of these a day and then wait two days, do six, wait two days, do seven. Now I'm up to like 60, or no, I'm sorry, now I'm up to like 25, <clears throat> both ways. But I slowly built, but this one I just went straight to 10 and I guess that was a lot. So I'm gonna have to wait for that to heal some and then start doing some lighter physical therapy on it to build up because I need that to be strong again. Because I, I have had days when, like, like, I'll wake up and I get up in the morning and I'll be like, huh, I don't really hear the tonight. Like, because there's different levels of my, the tinnitus I have. It's just like, when I go to bed, it starts to get worse immediately. And then in the morning, it's been getting worse all night. So, like, because I've been, when I lay down, I check this on ultrasound when I lay down um, and it was a, a Lord's chiropractic Dr. Middleton in Fort Lauderdale he I laid down and he put an ultrasound and then I sat up and he did an ultrasound and when I sit up my internal drug veins are open not much uh, they're they're a little more open now because the neck weights but they were only slightly open when I was upright and then when I would lay down they'd be shut so it would be just shut off and there'd be pressure build up and then some would push through. And there'd be pressure build up and some would push through. So that's why I don't have like um, really bad brain fog, I guess, is because like the blood is draining. It's, it's having a difficult time of it. But when, in that position when I'm laying down, it's really struggling to get through. Then tinnitus is worse, so that sucks. Like, so, um, so it's worse when I lay down and then it's worse all, it's just like that all night. and. And it gets loud again by morning, but I've had it be to the point where, even like last month, where um, I'd get up and it would be like as if I had been upright. Like after like two or three hours, it quiets down some, and I don't hear it as much. Um, and but it was like that right right away, and then I did this, where I was like. Um, I pushed my head forward. When I woke up this morning. I was like, "Jesus Christ!" Like it is so much louder. So it's like, and it didn't matter. Like it's, I to be as careful as I want when I'm laying down on the pillow. So even if I like make sure it's not on my neck and my head's like my spine's level and everything, it's just there's nothing I can do to make it not uh, squeeze my. Because I mean, I don't have much space to begin with because the space that the my internal drug vein only has like three millimeters to work with and you're supposed to have nine the neck weights have since raised that to about five millimeters 
that's I think that's why I've had reduced symptoms. And but I also got those from Dr. Middleton in, in Fort Lauderdale. Um, but um, so I got the I've had reduced symptoms, but it's still it's like when I lay down, it's um, it doesn't have to squash it much, and then I'm gonna have symptoms again, and it sucks. So. Uh, it's a positive note. I've been taking uh, Cordalis, which I don't know if that's how you say it. It's like C-O-R-Y-D-A-L-I-S. And like my shoulder I can, it doesn't hurt as much, so I can sleep through the night and I can also stretch it out more. So like, ugh, I can like almost get my hand up to above my head. Whereas like last week it was like about here. So, that's a, that's a good difference, uh, some progress. I think, because like if I could get the range of motion back enough, then I could start doing some light exercises in the full range of motion. And then I could start doing some more exercises and so on. So I slowly build it back up again and be able to do upper body work. Like I can't work out my back, because I can't like, I can work out one side, but it's like the other side I can't like, I can't pull stuff. Because you need your shoulder to be able, like your shoulder is a link in that chain and you can't, if it's, if it's weak, you can't pull anything. So I don't know how you work out your back. And the thing is like, I don't know what's causing the connective tissue degeneration. Like everybody gets weak connective tissue. Like if you don't work out at all, your connective tissue will just degenerate, period. It's like your muscle. Like what happens if you just lay in bed all day? Your muscle shrinks, you turn shrivel into nothing. Like, look what happens like, astronauts have no weight. They're, they can barely walk when they get back to the planet. Like, oh, well, I mean, I think they do all right now because they, they work out a lot, but um, what if they didn't? Um, so that's a normal state of a person is your muscle and your connective tissue becomes weaker and more, less dense and more easily injured. And, but I know plenty of people that don't work out that don't just like, and like fall apart really fucking bad like my muscle it's fine um it's ready to go but my connective tissue is like really fucked up and uh, i i might have been like that my whole life and i don't know if it's because of like a gluten thing like the gluten keeps damaging my connective tissue but i never had a problem my whole life because i never stopped working out my entire life like ever until this neck injury you know i might not work out for like a week but i was always lifting weights I was 175 pounds like 10 percent body fat maybe a little less um running for miles swimming yoga like i was playing soccer with people that are 20 years younger and just like destroying them and basketball same thing and um which is i don't care if people beat me i'm just saying like i was in a good i was in good health and so like if I could have had the, it's hard for me to identify like is this a new problem or did I just I never stopped working out so it never caught it never happened um and I didn't work out for like a year like I went for walks plenty and did chores and stuff but not as much chores because of my neck um but uh But I guess it, I degenerated faster for whatever, and I don't know if it's candida. Like I had an oral yeast infection a couple weeks ago, and that was bad. And that might it might be like so. Basically, I'm on like a no sugar diet, low carb diet, just basically meat, vegetables, boring as hell, no comfort food, and um, and the antifungals, of course, which wrecked me. Um, but I won't be on that much longer. But anyway, mostly I just wanted to say about the neck. Like, that's what I did. Push forward with my head like this. And uh, now tonight this is a lot worse. So hopefully it'll get better, but I just want people to know. Thanks.